Hello and welcome to the Counterpoint Podcast. Nothing less than a beautiful view. I'm Brendan. Here with Luke. It me. And Jonathan. That's me. And today we're talking about your name. And at the top, as always, Luke, how do you feel about this movie? It's fucking great. I love this movie. Jonathan, how That's do you feel about this movie? It was amazing. It was really good. We have a lot to talk about. I think this is the worst movie I've ever seen. Really? <laughs> no, I'm just fucking with you. There's lots <laughs> okay. of you. Uh, it was it was fine. I it, I clearly do not like it as much as you guys, but like I I don't think I would watch it again. But I, it wasn't like offensive to me to have to watch it. Like, it was it was fine. I kind of expected you to not like it as much, just because I know you you're not huge on like romance. I'm plots. glad it, I, it wasn't as romancy as I thought it would be. I will say that. Yeah. I'm a sucker for romance plots. I'll say it. They're great. I am, and it, it wasn't romance in the way that I don't like. It was like just the way I like it. I, like, I, I don't know. I, do I think hate, I think the romance was fine. I uh, do hate like bad romance, though. Like they did fall in love very stuff. suddenly. I don't they think did, I don't agree. I think that I, it was happening, but they didn't realize it. It happened over then, months, and it yeah. was like they were switching. Right. Constantly. I just mean in the, in the movie, it happened very suddenly. Uh, yeah. I suppose. But I, I think what really uh, co- context is really important in the sense that they were literally living each other's lives. So they got to know like each other's friends and yeah. they got to learn how to interact with them the way they expected them to be interacting with. Um, and they obviously communicated via not text, but they communicated via like notes that they left each other. Yeah. So... I feel like that makes it hard not to. And also they were inside themselves and it's hard to not like be attracted to yourself to a degree. Sure. I mean, I have, I have a few problems with, um, but Let's hear. Uh, how fast they fall in love isn't, isn't really. Hmm. Um, I mean, Mitsuha should have ended up with Okudera. Obviously. <laughs> um, it did seem weirdly like that was where it was going at the start, even though I I know obviously it go that way. Mm-hmm. But like, they were both clearly I tra- attracted to each other. I mean, Okudera obviously didn't know that Mitsuha. Uh, that was the only time that she was attracted to. Uh, oh yeah, that's Aki. definitely true. It's definitely true. But you also, uh, <laughs> I feel like Taki who he was as a person, especially then he just was like, Oh, pretty girl. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, no, no one to be fair. Okudera does say he was a nice kid and he was good and stuff. It, she just said he was better when Mitsuha was controlled. And everyone always points yeah. out his temper and how it was really under control with Mitsuha. Yeah. Everyone likes him it's... better as Mitsuha. Yeah. <laughs> um, Although they did say that the flip was true as well, where everybody liked Mitsuha better when right, she, she was went. less reserved. But also, yeah. people were scared of her because of his outburst. Because sure. he's an angry boy. But that was like healthy for her because, uh, like, she was you know, people were basically just like rumoring about her and saying shit that wasn't true. So like, it mm-hmm. took getting like a couple of outbursts to be like, okay, say it to my face, and then everybody just kind of stopped. Or at least that's what I took away from that. Um, so I, I don't know if we want to go into this part now or if we want to go later until we say some other things about the movie. Um, this movie is very similar to another movie I know. Go for it. Um, not like, not like one-to-one, but there's some, um, it is a movie from, I believe 2004 that admittedly I have not seen the entirety of, um, <laughs> it, my mother was watching it on TV and I was, you know, existing in the living room. Uh, it's from 2006. Um, but I looked up the plot synopsis. Can I make a guess? Can I, can I make a guess here? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Is it Butterfly Effect? It is not Butterfly Effect. Okay. Um, so this movie itself is a Western adaptation of a Korean movie. It's a one-to-one oh. adaptation, though, not like ripped. I mean, I would say an movie. Eastern adaptation, but... East, I mean, but... it's it's not made by Westerners, so it's it is a Western adaptation of a Korean movie. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Uh, it is the Lake House, starring Andrew Bullock and Keanu Reeves. Um, I won't I won't go too much into the, the movie, but basically, 
or I'll, I'll be quick about the plot of the movie. Um, basically, I don't remember who's forward in time and who's back in time, but they move into a lake house and they open the mailbox and there's a letter from the previous occupant. And they write a letter back for whatever reason. I don't know how they decide to do this, but they write a letter back and the letter goes back in time to the occupant and they can write letters back and forth to one. And they slowly fall in love. Do they realize that it's going through time? Yes. Um, oh. <laughs> and, I think that makes a difference, though. Yeah. And they meet each other uh, before they know. Well, one of them knows, one of them doesn't, obviously. Which never happened, though. Yes, it does. Meets a hug, meets him mm-hmm. on the train and says, it's me. Yeah, but they also, did, sh- did they not know? Like, because both of them knew. Like, both of them no, didn't he, know. He, he did no, not yeah. know. It was before his... Yeah, but she didn't know that they were on separate times. Yeah. That's right, right. Saying. But, um, yeah, I, I'm not... Again, I didn't say it's one-to-one. I'm saying there are some stark yeah. similarities here. Um, it's also on a train, I think, when they meet. But I don't remember. Really? Because um, I've never seen the Lake House. But what I will say... Well, there's, the there's, one there's more. Is just this entire movie... Uh, when you talk to the director, he actually mentions the lake house by name. No, I'm kidding. He doesn't. Uh, it's based on the, <laughs> Does red he thread, Bill the red thread of fate, which is uh, where the entire movie, uh, every plot point is from like an old wives tale from uh, Eastern mythology. Gotcha. But anyway, it, um, it spans through time and yeah, he, he tries to meet her. Uh, he dies in a car accident or something, but because they're out of sync of time, she's still getting letters from him, obviously. And then they they plan to meet at a restaurant. He doesn't show up. She thinks he stood him up or stood her up. Um, he eventually looks into it, realizes he died in a car crash, sends a letter back in time, saving him. And then they meet at the lake house and end their lives together. Hmm. I mean, there are some coincidences there, but I don't think. I think there's been movies. No, no, I'm, I'm not saying. I'm not saying like they that. copied the movie. I'm just saying there were a lot of similarities to this movie that I was yeah. vaguely aware of. So if you just like type in "Red Thread of Fate," that's basically like the. It's like a. It's basically an Eastern lore thing that has been around for a long time. Mm-hmm. I'm just typing it in. Pull it up. Which is basically, it transcends time, it transcends all this other stuff. And basically, the, the reason why he can uh, travel through time is because she's she gives him her the thread. Or whatever. Or no, just the thread. Earlier, so the, the thread was literally connected to time when she wove it? Yeah. Well, so that's, that's, that's the what they say about the... Uh... Musubi. Yeah, yeah they, they say it about. I didn't know how literal they were like getting with. Oh, that. I mean, the end of the movie makes it very clear that they're being, literal. especially because yeah. uh, he. The reason that she can swap bodies with him again is because he drinks the sake that is half of her spirit, and they're reconnected despite her being dead. And like it's, it's oh yeah, clearly the sake, very the sake was the not sake only was that, very literal, but but the reason why um the they family could has see each other at the powers. mountain is because it was Taka or. Doki, yeah. but yeah, tr- basically Twilight, which they mentioned earlier in the film, uh, allows you to speak to ghosts, like, uh, right. like right. specifically, you know. Yeah. So I feel like this this movie, it was I loved the, I wouldn't say sci fi ness, but I loved the fact that like nothing in the movie feels wasted to me. Like the mythology that it sets up is used. Yeah. It not only is it used, but it's. It's used sparingly enough that it's not like so. Oh, it's just it's not overblown. It doesn't feel like something that like they do. Have so the rules have the rules don't change. They don't feel like okay, they change. Well, they just I have a gripe like, with something they did. Okay. And I understand why they did it, but it still bothered me. Um, so I, I get the losing the memory thing, even though I because it's because they're dreaming when they're swapping bodies. It's hard to yeah. remember a dream. Um, I would argue that with something this pervasive of a dream that is happening constantly, you would eventually get better. But that's, that's not the thing I'm griping about. Mm -hmm. He opens his phone after realizing she's dead and all the messages disappear. Yeah. But she's always been dead. She was never not dead because they're several years out of step. So why, once he realizes it, does his phone (laughs) decide to erase the messages? It's actually because they're trying to interact, uh, 
unnaturally as the thread sees it. So if you think about it like this, right when Mitsuha, go, Mitsuha goes to uh, like write her name, that's when she fucking disappears. It's not at any other time. It's literally, and the reason why he's able to write it down is because he's not writing Mitsuha's name. Right. I, uh, I thought I thought that that happened just because Twilight ended. It was it's probably implied that, but, okay. but but they're not really supposed to interact. I, I still think it's bad, and also all of his memos are erased, <laughs> not just the ones from her. He has no yeah. memos left anymore. Um, yeah, but could, because they all probably have something to do with uh, his dreams. I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't like mention if you were like swapping bodies, I would be putting in like all my shit. And also I wouldn't have memos for any other reason. <laughs> like well, me personally. Well, she says he was keeping a diary before. That's why she starts writing in there because yeah. he was already keeping. It. I, I, that's it. just, that scene bugs me because yeah. it does not make sense. That's fair. Yeah. I mean, it can, if it bugs you, it bugs you. I mean, the whole time thing bugs me, but it, I think it's done in a way that I really like. Right. It, it was done in a way that to me wasn't really offensive. Like, if you had proof like that, it kind of ruins the story. So, like, yeah, it was super cheap. I'm not, it's not a perfect movie, but it, it was still good enough for me. Like, it, and it wasn't done in, like, a really, like, kind of fuck you way. It was more of just, like, a, I don't know. Are you talking about I proof guess, of the meteor? No, proof of, like, them swapping bodies. Oh, like, yeah, that's, had, that's another Had those thing. memos existed, it would have been, it would have just kind of ended the movie there. Well, that's you know, another so thing. It, it had been set up like multiple times uh, when they talked to the grandmother that she has also had this, right? Yeah. And it, actually, and her mother did it's too. All her mother did, and every every single member of her yeah. family has had this, and um, that essentially, um, they all forget. Like they don't have any memories. But his so friends wouldn't just... forget either, and he'd been talking about it. Like they all mentioned but things. What, like what exactly did he say? So he mentions that well. When he's looking for her, he mentions that there's a girl. And this is... Like, he starts mentioning it before he forgets her. And so you'd think that they would remember this. But, like, everyone just keeps, like, maneuvering around them as if nothing's going on. Despite the fact yeah. that they're talking like lunatics. If he, if he would have mentioned, maybe, her name directly to them... Which I don't think he does. The one thing that I, I, I do think they could make slight changes to the movie in two places where I I wasn't bothered by them, but I felt the movie could be even better. And that's um when he sees, you know, the names of the of her friends, and then he sees her name. Mm -hmm. I wish he was just like looking at it and made it very clear that like he's like, fuck, I you know, if he couldn't remember then it would be better yeah but if it still made it very obvious with that being said my other big change would be at the very end um when they see each other in the train and it goes across that's where i would have ended it like when they both see each other right at the train and their eyes get fucking wide like oh my fucking god it's you yeah. that's where i would have ended it I think either I I don't like how they had them cross the last time because I was just like okay well now you've just overdone it. So, With yeah. the like going back time thing. Like no no after the uh, the train sequence when they run into each other for the last time and they cross again it's like okay yeah, yeah, yeah. You've where they like don't say anything. Time. Yeah it's like at this yeah. point you both it's literally made both the got yeah. off. This is fucking I agree. <laughs> Which is why in my personal opinion I would have had. Uh, both of them just look at each other, fucking eyes get really wide, and then that would be it. Cut to black. Like, as they both hit the tunnel. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah, that'd be good. Also, this I is, think this both isn't are a fine. I, just think I think the reason why... What's the plot hole? They, oh, no, I was saying this isn't a plot hole or something that needs to change in the movie, but fuck her dad. Because he, <laughs> he knows that this is a thing that happened. Mm -hmm. he, he knows about the body swapping, but he... In the first interaction, he acts like she's crazy. Does he know? Yeah, yeah. Because when uh, when Taki he does say it's not you. Yeah, yeah when Taki gets mad and, and grabs uh, and grabs him, he says, "You're I, not me to her." Yeah, but who are you? I didn't. I didn't take. Uh, I didn't no, take. I, that I thought that is absolutely literal. 
Oh, wow. I, I agree with uh, what Brennan's saying, but at the same time... But well, he 100% knows, because he, he says the family's crazy, too. Yeah, but here's the uh, thing. Maybe. If, um, first of all, this is what I think. I wouldn't personally trust, like, a random person that, like, came into my daughter's body either. And I think that makes the movie better, because when she goes back, it's implied that because it is her, she's able to convince her father. And I think that's also interesting because it, it kind of, to me anyway, as far as like stages of relationship go or whatever, not even so much stages, but it's like a trust thing because if it were up to Taki, Taki could have stayed and been like, no, like he could have been selfish and been like, no, you need to leave and just like taking her and fucking run her like fucking a hundred thousand, you know, like, yeah, that, that's one thing I like about the movie is that this, so that's another thing I, I like is that while it is a romantic movie, um, the plot isn't so hinged on the romance. Like the yeah. the climax of the movie isn't about saving her; it's about stopping the disaster. And also, not only that, I mean, he could have done that. He could have been like, you know what, I'm saving her, and you know, he wanted to. You could like mm-hmm. feel it, but at the same time, I think what makes this movie stand out and really like elevates it to me to be like really fucking good is the fact that he puts his trust into her. Like, no, you need to do this. Like, I can't. And he realizes he's not going to be able to change people's minds. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's why he goes to the mountain and that's why he switches. Like, I cannot do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that elevates it to me. Anyway. Yeah, it was one of the best, like, romances I've seen in in a film, I'd say. Because one, one, because of that. And then two, because it wasn't like a, uh, I don't know. It wasn't like an elevated type of romance, I feel. I feel like... uh, a lot of the times, like romance films, will just be like, ah, and then it was perfect, or like, like she so did perfect. everything perfect. And, and this movie wasn't like that. It was like, oh, he is like, he's filled with rage and outbursts all the time, and she's timid and like, I don't know, she's overly. Yeah, um, but when, even when they meet, right? Like, uh, yeah. he's like, you've been touching my titties, you know, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and what's funny is like, she's definitely been touching his dick, like, like so. She's just like being, you know, I don't know what you would say, but like coy or not even coy, but just like, oh, yeah, like wanted to say something like above, like what a normal relationship. A lot of times they talk that kind of shit in my what I've seen in my life, my relationships like "Mm, you've been touching my titties, you know, The, the way that it like you can just tell too, like in the animation, they're just happy to fucking like interact with one another too. Yeah, and it's, it, which they have never been able to do done up until the mountain scene. I, I mean, I think that's the thing. It's it's not the movie. It's not a movie about a, a perfect romance. It's a movie about, in a very literal sense, soulmate. Yeah. yeah. True. And I think, I think if this movie were to end like halfway through, I feel like the first half is one of those movies that it's almost like a bait and switch, where like the first half is just. It's okay. Like this is an alright anime. It's an alright movie. And then the second half is so fucking good. Now, I will say, there is always the issue with time of there's a paradox. There, like there, there always is a paradox whenever there's like an element in time in a story. I feel. But is there? Yeah, because if uh, if the meteor didn't kill everybody, then he wouldn't know to uh, go back and save everybody. And then I think everybody that would is- be saved. That depends on what kind of. I mean, it's not my like absolute preferred method of like uh, thought of time travel, is and it's literally changing space and time uh, going forward only. Which mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of movies have that, but I felt like the way this did it was better than. Oh, it was better. Like it didn't bother me at all because of the way that the story was laid out and kind of like what it was about. And this is one of the things that I kind of wanted to talk about was. Uh, I think that time travel in like a a movie that isn't about like saving the world using time travel is the best like way to do it. Like yeah. save town with the time travel kind of was the point of the movie, but that wasn't what you really cared about. Ah, so like, you, you agree you do hate Tenet. <laughs> I didn't say 
I, mean, <laughs> I didn't like that. It's a time travel I movie about saving the world. He gave it a six. He gave it a six. Calm down. I gave it a six. I also said all the reasons that I disliked it was because it didn't hit on. This is what I'm saying. Like, how many time travel movies are there about like saving the world? Though, I, I, hold on. I would say it's the exact same problem that like uh, a lot of superhero movies have, and why I like The Dark Knight. Right. The Dark Knight, at no point is it like, oh, my God, the stakes are so high. I mean, the stakes are high. Like, at one point, it's a uh, – what is it? It's between two uh, ships that both have, like, 100 people on them, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, oh, fuck. Like, there are a lot of people who are about to die. And so the stakes felt more real. Like, uh, the world ending does not feel – like legit stakes and it's like all right well obviously the world can't end so yeah i think there are ways to do it well but i i largely agree but i don't i don't think i've seen that many time travel movies that are about like the end of the world levels well i mean i guess what i'm getting at terminator is... yeah, yeah <laughs> there you go. but it's, and it's pretty self-contained even though being about the end of the world right like it's still about this one person yeah yeah I don't know. It's just I don't. I guess maybe I can't like express why I the the no, no, I mean, I, I, I get paradox what you're saying. didn't it didn't bother me in this film, and I think it was because of how um, I don't know. Like that was definitely the point of it was to like save the people. Like that's where the stakes were, but your investment was more in the characters and if they could do it, which is like it was normally good. not where my I don't know. Normally it's not where. Uh, the care lies in in time travel plots. And I like how they hung you for a minute. They you didn't know like did yeah. she fucking do it or not? Like you know like I don't know. And then especially especially because I mean, they were working with time. You didn't know if it was going to be like a you can't change it or if it was going to be like they did it. No, it's yeah. it's a romance movie. They were always going. to I disagree completely. I was not hanging at all. It was very obvious that they were. I don't know, man. I don't Animals know like that specifically. At, at like its that, heart, it's still a romance like, movie. Yeah, at its heart it is, but you know how you know that there are romance movies where like it doesn't happen and it's just like a heartbreak. Yeah. How many are there? Right. Have you seen Butterfly Effect? Butterfly <laughs> Effect is not a romance movie. It kinda is. It kinda isn't. You definitely there is a romance element to it that is very big, and then he literally spills his heart to Hold on, uh, hold on. Having Having a romance does not make it a romance. Movie. Okay, when half of the movie is focused on the romance, which I would argue there's more romance that goes on within Butterfly Effect than goes on within Your Name. Butterfly Effect was an exercise in how bad can we fuck up this dude's life if we keep getting to do reruns. <laughs> I mean, I'm not disagreeing with that, but... Half of the movie was nothing but romance. The entire time. I would not describe Butterfly Effect as a romance movie. That's crazy. I would. And the whole point, the ending is like, all right, that's why I bring up Your Name is similar to the Butterfly Effect. Because in the Butterfly Effect, he saves her and then he's like, I can literally never fucking contact her again under any circumstance. And then at the end, the very last scene, mind you, they're both walking past each other. They do that. They oh. do walk past each other. I, I, I only acknowledge the other ending of Butterfly Effect as a real ending. All right, but the one that everyone the other saw ending's way better. Where he kills himself yeah. in the womb. Right. Okay. That was I. I will say that is the original ending, but it's not the ending you saw. In it's theater. also it's a much more appropriate cap on what is a like his fucked up life in this movie. I don't know. Anyway, that's not we're really the movie we're talking we're a lot about. Yeah. Butterfly. <laughs> I, I honestly have very nothing similar movies. I have nothing left to say about your name. I will just say, and I have other things to say. First of all, the fucking music is absolutely excellent. Oh yeah, I mean I, the music and art both. I have no issues with. They, they were both. They great. were. They were like some. I would say that the music, while not like the best music ever, I would give that to fucking Daft Punk in a in a Tron Legacy. You think it's the best music in a movie? In a in a movie ever? Yes. Wow. Well, I might have an unpopular opinion about the art. I didn't think it was bad. I'll say that before I, I say my opinion is uh, I thought it was like really good, but I didn't think it was anything. Uh, I think it depended on the So we're learning there, Jonathan. There were some scenes that were just okay. Jonathan's like, you, a you digital me, art cuck. That's what we're yeah, learning. You are 100%, but you cannot tell me that like when Wait, they- are you saying I don't like hand-drawn anim hand animation? 
But this movie had hand drawn animation. I know, but that like just because it's hand drawn doesn't mean it's better. But in also, a, I I no, prefer hand drawn to. Hold on, but it was hand drawn in a sequence when he's like going back in time when he drinks the Kuchimikaze. Oh right? yeah, that was like the that was the best. But Dude, like, that, that was fucking amazing to see. Oh yeah, great, but. I just thought, like, and even the music at any point, like, sometimes when I'm at work, I will just fucking listen to this uh, OST because I feel like it, like, it calms me. It's like that exact, like, the Daft Punk I put on when I, like, want to get pumped up a little bit. And then I put on uh, this if I'm, like, stressed. I'll be like, all right, we're going to listen to fucking your name. And I find the music, especially the orchestral parts, and uh, obviously uh, the stuff done by. Damn, who are they? Uh, I can't tell you the the band name specifically, but they did a fucking great job too. But the orchestral stuff, like when he's having the trip, when uh, it comes close to the end, Mitsuha's actual theme, I felt like was great. And the fact that like both actors or whichever you would say actually spend like pretty equal amount of time on the thing but yeah i just love the art i think there were a couple scenes that could have been a little bit better where you could kind of tell like okay this is like three-dimensional art like laced with 2d which i'm not a fan of Mm. but yeah all right I thought it was. Have to say? I thought it was super vivid, super saturated to the point of like there are a fuck ton of colors. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I have no issue. Which is the exact opposite of Tenet, by the way. I don't think Tenet right, was brown, Tenet. but I mean, there there is an there exists an application in which you can twenty minutes film to see uh, the average color of a film to see its palette. That's cool. Yeah. And I will tell you right now, this 100% is more colorful. Uh, I don't disagree. I just don't think that Tenet was devoid of color. I think it was pretty close to it. I also don't agree with him. I, I, I mean, I don't think it's I, I think to what we're talking I think the about last anyways. action scene is very, very brown and bad. But it, And you know what? The last color. action scene was a very important moment for the film that sure. it fucked up. Are we always going to talk about Tenet? That is this what Jonathan? I, I, is this I what never, Jonathan? Is I never bring me? it up. I never bring it up. You, you guys, do. you literally have to. You you have to fault. recommend Ghost Ship because if you don't, we have nothing else bad to like. Compare. Oh, we'll get to, again, we'll get to bad to movies. Movies. The only thing is, I don't want to waste my week on a bad movie unless yeah, it's, unless it's a in retaliation. Movie. How, how, how big is Ghost Ship? It's like a ninety-five minute movie. I'm going to look it up. It's probably it, it can't be that oh, long of a movie. No, no, but I, no, I'm not saying I don't want to watch a bad movie. I'm saying I don't get another turn to suggest a movie for. Yeah, it's exactly weeks. an hour and a half. So yeah, but I don't get another turn to suggest. Do a we want to have? Do we want to have a bad movie night every fourth? Well, what I told you guys was if if there goes two weeks where I don't like your movies, I'm going to retaliate with a bad movie. Mm-hmm. Then we're gonna have a lot of bad movies. Jonathan White. No, no, no. This is fine. Jonathan, uh, your name isn't bad enough for me to want to tell you. It's fine. I don't dislike this movie. It was a good movie. Tenet Tenet was bad enough for me. Jonathan, you wanna you wanna start the score? Are we ending this episode? Sure. Hmm? Does anybody else have anything to say? It's a very short one. I mean, we all. We might not all completely agree, but I don't think I, I universally I don't think someone can give this like a really bad score. Okay. I mean, I could I could try to explain why I'm not like super duper big on the art. If you want to keep yeah, digging I mean, into that's... it, sure. Um, <laughs> I guess I would say it's like it's not like super stylistic until uh, that that one scene where he takes the sake. I mean, up until then, it was just very like. Um, I mean, it was pretty and it was like good to the eyes. I'm not saying it's bad at all. Like I would still rate it very highly out of like, you know, animation that I've seen. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't, it wasn't particularly smooth. It wasn't, uh, you know, particularly detailed. It wasn't like particularly stylized. The backgrounds were very detailed, but um, the characters themselves were still 
pretty simple. Not that that's a bad thing. Again, it was excellent art. I just don't think that the art is worth stressing for this movie. It's it's worth saying it's good, but I wouldn't say that this is like superb, amazing art. Like, I personally. think the art is uh, more supposed to be in the style of old and drawn anime than it is supposed to be. It's supposed to be mm-hmm. reminiscent. At least that's the vibe I got. I think it hits a good balance of like, you know, it clearly uses new technologies. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just mean, it's, it's, I think it's supposed to summon that feeling. In the, the yeah, old but I, I like the fact that it was almost kind of realistic, but drawn, mm-hmm. which is what Shinkai, the director, has kind of been known for his entire career. It's kind of like realistic, but clearly anime. But I, th- I think that that has to do with just like detailed backgrounds with like still simplistic characters. It's kind of how it gets that vibe of like realism. Some, some of the animation he has with like water is really yeah. impressive. And I'm not going to recommend another, like, I'm not going to be like, oh, and we also have to watch these other Kinkai films because I are movies because I do feel like uh, Shinkai, his other movies are nowhere near as good as this. Like this, Compared to, I don't know if you've seen Weathering with with you or five centimeters per second. I have not. But they get a lot of hype. But I've watched them personally. They're like they're okay to me. But yeah. Yeah. I also I want to stress it again. The art is very good. I'm not saying it's not good. It is very good. I just don't think that it's like we hate. We get it. You hate the art. No. I know people listening to this will be like, oh, wow. Yeah. I can't believe he hates this yeah. art. <laughs> people listening to this. Good <laughs> well, there's. I feel like it's been long enough that if you don't automatically, like, when you open up with the, I don't know, I feel like that's usually what happens when, like, people comment on shit. It's usually within, like, the first minute or two, and they feel the need to fucking pause it. Yeah. <laughs> and then be like, you fucking idiot. It's not x it's y even though like you later went on to elaborate like oh well, yeah, yeah. Exactly. i mean if, yeah. if anything people That's... people don't even watch to the end of stuff a lot of time so if anybody yeah. were to get a hateful comment it would be me for saying like fine <laughs> that's that happens in the first three minutes yeah. yeah definitely um oh one coincidence i forgot that i just because we were talking about art um relating to the lake house uh keanu reeves's character is also an architect Huh. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe you need to make a, uh, a standalone video. Then I would have to watch The Lake House, and I super don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> because that is a romance movie. That'll be a homework assignment to uh, any viewer. And any zero of you out there. Listen here. I just looked up Ghost Ship score on IMDb. <laughs> it's a five point five. You really want to watch Ghost Ship? <laughs> Why do you want to watch? No, 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 no. I'm, not, I'm not like <laughs> super into it. But I feel like it has to happen eventually. We've talked about it too often. Maybe not next week or the week after that, but eventually. It, I mean, if, if so, if twenty subscriber special. If I, if I get to the, <laughs> we we can already have twenty subscribers. I mean, this was an existing. Oh well, our I don't know when we get twenty more. Um. But no, if if there is a week where I feel the need to retaliate, Ghost Ship is definitely on the retaliation. Okay, very well. Well, I look forward to it, okay? Because I remember as a kid being like, it's not that bad. I love watching crappy movies, so this is not a problem. Yeah, so that's it. the thing. is a movie that's worse. I, uh, <laughs> I, re- I remember liking it as a kid, and then I rewatched it a few times. I was like, there's one scene in this movie that I like, and that's it. Oh, I have a, I have a funny thing to say about that my girlfriend was hounding me like i really want to watch 13 going on 30 i remember loving it oh, as you're a gonna kid. say 13 no 13 going on 30 and uh i downloaded it put it up on my plex she watched it and uh yeah not a great movie no it's fucking horrible what happened i remember liking that movie as a kid too but like it's cringy and it's like offensive like legitimately you're like this bitch is 13 like what are you doing anyway not germane yeah. at all to the podcast. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jonathan, do you have a movie picked out for next week yet or not yet? Uh, not yet. Should it, Should I do that? Should we do that? No, so I mean, if, if you had it ready, I think it, it's cool yeah. to say it, but if you don't. Yeah, don't, I, don't, just don't pick lock should yourself. I, should, I give the, should I give the options? Is it Moonlight and Lost in Translation? 
Is it what? Moonlight and Lost in Translation. The, those are two of them. What else is there? Um, actually, yeah, no. Moonlight or Lost in Translation is going to be one of those. Okay. Very well. I I feel a particular way about that. All right, which way? But I won't, I won't tell you because I want you to pick the one you want. Yeah, it's your pick. Okay. All it's right. your pick. I'm not even going to pick from that pick. The only reason I picked from the list that uh, Brennan gave me I do feel like I was robbed of my pick with that decision. You were, but you know what? <laughs> okay. We didn't have a set thing. Yeah. You'll get a full pick next time. But uh, no. The only reason we went with Tenet was because nobody had any picks. Yeah, that's true. And the, the week after that. Yeah, I really, reason, really wish we'd had some picks. Like, I, you, you had a list, and I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm picking this one. Like, <laughs> let's just watch this one. I mean, I'm really excited. I, I love Snowpiercer. Got it. <laughs> it, it was it was pretty good. Um, oh yeah, so we need to go down ratings. I, I suspect this will be the highest average rating movie, um, but I guess we'll see. So Luke, what is your rating for your name? Well, it's like you said, and this is before the podcast, but a, a ten out of ten. Nothing before the podcast movie. exists. How dare you say it's like I said? A ten out <laughs> we of are ten. Not people before we go live. You will watch again and again. <clears throat> you love it every time. That that's how I get my ten out of ten. And I got to say, I fucking give it a 10 out of 10. But I wouldn't have chosen it if it wasn't one of my favorite movies. So Okay. Not nothing. What do you give it? I don't really believe in 10 out of 10s. Because uh, like the fact that we had plot holes that we discussed. That's, yeah, that, that's, like, that's fair. That is how it be. You're right. I, I would say it's 9. Super enjoyable. Would totally watch it. Again. So I, I agree that this movie's not a 10 out of 10. I think saying you don't believe on a 10 out of 10s in a rating system is crazy. Because then why does the rating system? That's true. That's fair. Maybe I got to think about it more, but I don't know. Either um, way, nine out of ten is a great score for any any movie. This is for me stuck between trying to decide. I can tell you the two numbers are six and seven. Okay. Really? Yeah. Okay. And the the reason I'm torn. Is because I I want to give it a seven, but I normally reserve seven, eight, nine, ten for movies I will watch again, and I will not watch this movie again. Um, I think that this might sway your opinion. Is that you despise romance films and you didn't despise this? So I think that that should be something. I mean, I already said I want to give it a seven. I want to give it the higher score. I'm just trying to decide how hard so that my rule is going. Because I want my rating system to be. Consistent. Do you think this movie gets gets a six out of ten? Well, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, since you want to give it a seven, that be a part of your ruling system. I mean, if you want to, we can make a six point five. But no, 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 I don't. I'm saying, I don't like, do I'm that. saying, like, seven and above can be for stuff that you're going to watch again, or things that like break the mold for you. Maybe. I I will give it a seven. Um, I won't watch it. <laughs> I'll have to reevaluate my. So it's a seven closer I to a six day, and eight. Maybe twenty years from now, I think you will watch this again. That's patently untrue. My fiance also has no interest in seeing it, so there's literally no reason for me to watch this movie. I don't know. You never know what's gonna happen. Luke yeah. is gonna make it his life goal to, <laughs> to have you watch this movie. <laughs> it's it's, it's interesting <laughs> that you it's interesting that you think you cannot or I cannot out stubborn you and just declare that I will never watch this movie again and make it so we'll not know until you die. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah this this is of course the highest aggregate score this is our ratings eight point um do snow piercers point six this is now our highest rated movie I, I can't believe Jonathan that you would give snow piercer what what do you give, give it a four. I, just, I just didn't like it that much I'm four. sorry I tried to like I tried to say I it I wonder what I mean, will oust this movie I think I would to, to upset this movie I would literally have to pick a movie that I think Luke and I would both give like a 9 or a 10 and hope Jonathan likes it cuz this <laughs> this movie this movie is rated very highly for us. I don't think that this movie's going to be the, yeah, I don't think it'll be on here movie. forever for sure. It'll be—I mean, I don't think it'll be the top rated forever. I mean, it—it it barely squeaked by with a nine for me. I think—I think it will for a while, mostly because I have no inclination to pick 
a movie that I I know is beloved by us. I don't think that that's why I, this movie. Again, is I had us. no idea that. No, no, no. I'm not saying that's what happened here. I'm just saying. I was actually very curious I to no see. Interest. Uh, but what you guys would think of it? Well, yeah. I, I think this, this is also going to be interesting to see our own tastes, like yeah. laid out, like data wise. I do. I also kind of want to just see who who gives the highest scores. I mean, it's a little low data points right now. To, to listen, really I'm to number one right now in like highest that. scores for sure. Oh, uh, I think we're probably pretty close. You're seven and Dude, two I have, thirds. I you, you That's can't. true. That's true. And also, Jonathan gave fucking Snowpiercer a four. I yeah. didn't like it that much. Yeah, I don't yeah, know what to I gave, tell you. I gave that puts me at the top for sure of the highest score so, given. But again, I think we've talked about this so far, and uh, anything can change. But I think Brennan said that he gives four movies that he could point to and be like, "That was just me thinking off of the top of my head." Yeah, and off the top of my head, I can only think of three. Oh, I think that there Jonathan will be I actually a have break the... to my rule where I will give something a ten out of ten, but then say like, "I mean, I don't know." I think that there will be an exception to the rule, but I, I don't know what it is yet. Like, um, I haven't seen a movie that I've given it, like, a 10 in my head. This is interesting. Jonathan and I have the same amount, uh, the same number of points assigned at the moment. Huh. Both what assigned. am I, like, a point and a half above? <laughs> uh, no. So we've we've assigned 19 points across three. Uh, you have assigned 23 points across three. Yeah, yeah, I'm way above so far. It's it's okay. Whatever Jonathan's movie is, we're gonna fucking tank it. Like, no, I'm <laughs> not right. I, I think I, I, no, I'm I like genuinely one of those two movies. I think will tank. <laughs> what do you mean? I, oh. I think that you guys don't like Lost in Translation. I'm pretty certain. I uh, I watched a little bit of it, but to be honest, what I saw, I was interested in seeing more. Because you guys both said that you didn't, um, you didn't make it through it. But you both started it. To be honest, but, no, I didn't start it. I've, I was, I've seen scenes of it. Yeah, I, yeah, I never I mean, sat I, down. I saw to watch maybe it. the first twenty-five minutes, and my friend, I, I went over to his house, and he was like, "You gotta watch this," or apartment, I guess. And I was fucked up, like beyond <laughs> right, <laughs> like, fucked up. And he put it on for like twenty-five minutes, and I was like, "Okay." It's actually I mean, it's I, very rare for me to not finish a movie. I think I nodded off, yeah. There's a few movies. Uh, Tenet was one where I was like, oh no, I'm falling asleep. Like, <laughs> <laughs> But again, I, I probably should have rated that lower considering how much shit I talk about it. Yeah, you've yeah, talked more shit about it than you, I do. Yeah. <laughs> but, I'm actually surprised. But to be At honest, the time, you were very like... No, were very, it like, the, it's what, exactly what I said in the thing. It committed the cardinal sin of movies, which is that it is completely fucking average and therefore it has no uh, legitimate value. Yeah, it sounds like it should have been a lower rating there. <laughs> but no. But that's I why he it. gave it a five, because he wanted it to be the perfect... Well, that's... Like the perfect uh, averageness. But, but again, then that doesn't really like display you how you do it. With the it. action, it's, it's fine. If you start thinking about it, then it's shit, right? That's what I. That's why I gave it my rating. Was like I thought that cinematically it was great, plot wise it was awful, but like character wise it was okay, and that was like a yeah. six. For you me. think? I, I feel like this this method works better than just being like I don't know because with my if I watched it again, if I did watch Tenet again, I'd probably give it a five again. Well, do you think if we maintained this for years, we would ever go back and rewatch any of the movies we watched? Maybe, but Maybe. Well, all I'm trying to say is this, okay? Um, I don't think I would ever look at a movie that I didn't like and be like, actually, it's much better. No. I'm more likely to look at a movie that I did like and be like, well, it's problematic. I could see myself uh, going back in either way. I don't know. If there's one movie that I can say the first time I watched it, I just thought it was okay, but upon fear like further and further watching i was like oh this is actually quite good uh it's demolition man i love demolition like 100 percent. the first time i watched that movie i was like it's okay i think bean wants us yes there's i agree <laughs> and also we're not talking about the movie anymore so. no, we're, we're like meta talking yeah, about we're it. very much meta talking it's about so the fucking good but anyway yeah um so yeah anyway thanks for listening we will be back in week with either moonlight or loss in translation or another movie maybe 
<laughs> but yeah, I'll bait. I'll just bait you and go with something else. Yeah. Are you Good gonna, eye, Mike. Are you gonna, you're not going to say your goodbye. All right. Peace out. See ya. Luke isn't saying the thing he normally says. See ya.